All right, anytime I hear the term poor man's anything, I tend to be a little skeptical. Um, a lot of people call this poor man's lobster. I have made this before several times, and surprisingly, it does come out very similar to lobster. I wouldn't say it's exactly as good as lobster. Essentially, what we're gonna do is boil four cups of water, and we're gonna add one cup of sugar. I've also heard of people doing this with Sprite or 7-Up, where essentially they take Sprite right out of the bottle, pour that into a pot, and then boil the fish in that. I have never tried that technique, but I can't see it being that much different than using the sugar we're gonna do. So we have four cups of water here. Bring this to a hard boil. Once that's going, we're gonna do one cup of just regular old sugar. We'll do about a tablespoon of salt. Give that a good stir to dissolve all that sugar. Bring that back up to a boil. All right, so we've added our sugar, a little bit of salt, and get a good boil. We're gonna turn off the heat and add in the fish. We're gonna cover the pot. Now we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. All right, while our fish is in the pot, soaking up that lovely sugar in there, we're gonna take about a half a stick of butter. I'm gonna put this into a metal bacon dish. And we're just gonna melt this under the broiler, about five inches from the broiler. All right, 10 minutes is up, our fish is done, and our butter should be melted. Oh yeah, just in time, just starting to brown. We'll leave the broiler on, because the fish is gonna go back in there for a few minutes. Remove these to the pan with the butter. Just want to spread these out evenly. And give them a nice little brush of melted butter. And we're going to fire these back under the broiler for about four minutes. We don't want to to completely brown. We just want to get a little bit of color and kind of cook some of that moisture out and dry them out a little bit. And obviously anytime you're broiling anything you want to keep a good eye on it. Sometimes it takes quicker than you think it's gonna. All right we've been broiling this in the butter for about six minutes now. You see it's just starting to get a little bit of color on top there. It actually does smell like lobster. Let's remove this to a plate and we're gonna allow this to cool down and chill. Now you certainly could eat this as is um, it would be dynamite, wouldn't have a little bit of lobster flavor. What we're going to do is continue working with this, make it into a lobster roll. We'll pop these guys in the refrigerator for about 10-15 minutes until they're you know, at least room temperature. All right, while the cooked fish is chilling in the refrigerator, we're going to make our dressing for the lobster roll. Basic same recipe you would use for your ordinary everyday lobster roll. We have mayonnaise, we have some diced celery, salt, pepper, some chives, and lemon juice. Start with about a half a cup of mayonnaise. Go with the juice of half a lemon. I'll throw in about a tablespoon and a half of cut chives. We're gonna save the rest to garnish at the end. And let's call that about a third of a cup of diced celery. Black pepper and a hefty pinch of salt. Give that a good mix. This is gonna be enough to cover about one pound of cooked fish. All right, our fish has been chilling in the refrigerator for about 25 minutes now. It should be nice and cool. We're gonna take that out and mix it in with a dressing. Take that and crumble it up. You don't want to make it into too small of pieces because it's going to break up further when we stir it. And it's really firmed up quite a bit. It does have a texture similar to lobster meat. Also going to give this a good dose of paprika and that's really more just to get that red coloring that you associate with a lobster roll. Just give it a good mix, but you don't want to over stir it. You don't want to break down that fish into too small of pieces. And we'll just throw that back in the fridge while we get our buns ready. All right, one of the keys to any good lobster roll is a good bun. I think it's a must that you get the New England style frankfurter rolls. Um, interestingly, you can't get these in other places of the country. It's really just in the Northeast. 
They're split on the top, not on the side. And these were actually designed in the 1940s for clam rolls for Howard Johnson's restaurant, and, uh, made by J.J. Nissen. But that's a key, and the nice part about that is we can toast either side of the bun. I'm just gonna melt a little butter in a pan. All right, our butter is melted. We're gonna turn this down to a medium low. I don't wanna burn them. Get a little coat of butter on each side. And toast these until they just start to get golden brown. Ooh yeah, hot buttered bun, baby. Oh, look at that nice hot buttered bun. That's gonna be tasty. We're gonna take a, just one little piece of lettuce in there. We'll pull her open. Now we're gonna spoon on our poor man's lobster meat here. Not too much, I don't like to overstuff them. Garnish with a little fresh chives on top. Make that look pretty. And we're just gonna give them a little dusting of paprika. Gotta add potato chips with the lobster roll. All right, and there you have it, the finished product. We have taken a scup, we've cooked it in boiling water with a good amount of sugar. We then put it under the broiler with some butter and made a salad, a dressing out of mayonnaise and the other accoutrements that you normally associate with a lobster roll. And now we have our poor man's lobster roll. <laughs>